While plenty of music-related jobs were getting canceled during the pandemic, three New York City-based musicians, vocalist Tana Alexa, Siren Tip, and saxophonist Owen Brodor, decided to support the New York City music scene by creating Live From Our Living Rooms. Their inaugural festival and fundraiser, which ran April 1st through the 7th, featured daily children's music showcases, master classes, and events and performances, all to raise money in order to give grants to New York City-based musicians who had lost work due to the pandemic. That initial festival has spawned a new ongoing initiative, which is now focused on keeping musicians working. Tana, Sarintip, and Owen join us now with more on how this all got started. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. So, so how did you come up with this idea? So basically we started, um, where I started this back in March when the pandemic first hit and I was just, you know, browsing through my Instagram and my Facebook. And I saw that so many of my friends were missing out on tours and, you know, the new album releases and all these things. And I felt like I wanted to try to help. So I started a personal GoFundMe fundraiser to try to help. And after just a few days of, you know, posting about it on my social media, Owen Broder, a friend of mine who's also here on the call, reached out and said, hey, what if we started like an online festival to try to raise money for your fundraiser? I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Let me also reach out to Tana, who's an amazing vocalist and who knows a lot about grant writing and also how to kind of, you know, be able to raise tax deductible funds. So um, Sarintip and I have been friends for a while now, and we're both vocalists here in New York City. And um, and as, as Sarintip said, she and Owen had had this conversation, um, and they brought me on board uh, to basically help with the fundraiser. And uh, I had the idea of getting a nonprofit uh, a sponsor who would help us solicit tax-deductible donations. Um, and, uh, and the idea was that we would basically start small. We would start with New York City, which is our home and our love, and, and we would help New York City musicians. So originally, uh, we had New York City-based musicians performing for this week-long online festival, uh, and we were soliciting tax-deductible donations to give performance grants through our nonprofit partner to, uh, to New York City-based musicians. So people, we had this festival, we raised um, almost $60,000 uh, in, for the duration of the festival, and, um, and then we had uh, a grant application cycle uh, through which we had a, uh, an independent panel look through, um, uh, look through all of the applications, and then we gave grants. That's amazing. Now, Owen, tell me a little bit about yourself. You play the saxophone, and what is it like for artists right now? Well, I think it's a continuously changing market. You know, right now we're in a very different situation than uh, we were back in April. Back in April, we, you know, every musician was experiencing a similar um, circumstance where everything we had through, you know, virtually the end of the year uh, was getting canceled, and there was no alternative. Um, Life from Our Living Rooms was, I think, uh, one of the first versions of an alternative performance venue where people were live streaming concerts from their homes. Um, I think that that is, it was, a, it was a great kind of vehicle for the time, but uh, I think we've seen things move on. And, and now, uh, you know, camps, summer camps where there are educational opportunities for musicians are coming up all over the place. Live from our living rooms hosted one such event. But venues are hosting concerts, live concerts, um, on their stages with no audiences and live streaming those for people to watch from their homes. Uh, another, another way about going to see live music is to go see outdoor concerts where socially distanced audiences can enjoy music live and in person. Um, another way forward, I think, is going to be uh, pre-recording concerts with high production value and marketing those concerts, selling those concerts to different presenters all over the world so that people are able to watch high quality performances um, on an ongoing basis. Our fundraiser is still open. Uh, we are continuously collecting uh, donations to support uh, this grant initiative and they can go to our website www.livefromourlivingrooms.com. And uh, from there, you'll, you'll easily navigate to our donate page.
but you can contribute any amount. No amount is too small. Amazing. And I, think it's, I think it's also important just to note to note that not only is the donation part important, but it's also important to note that our grant application cycle, our next one will be announced soon. And so any artists who are U.S. based artists, we've expanded now to all of the U.S., um, who are in need during this time. Once we open our grant application process, you can apply for a grant and um, and hopefully you'll get one. Well, thank you all so much for talking about this issue, but more importantly, doing something about the arts. I think it's so inspirational and very entrepreneurial. I love that. Thank so, you so much. Thank you, and I, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank, thank you. you, best to you as well. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. <laughs> the initiative was credited as the first online jazz festival by Rolling Stone. And the team's efforts were also featured in publications including the Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, and most recently Forbes. For more information, go to livefromourlivingrooms.com.